Hey, and thank you very much for tuning in to this video about the West Highland Way, which is one of the most amazing hikes here in Europe. During the next few minutes, I will take you through the Scottish Highlands with some of my personal footage. I will tell you how I prepared myself and what challenges that I had to face so that you already know what to expect if you decide to jump into this adventure. By the way, my name is Sandro and on my channel you find videos about all kinds of outdoor adventures. So if you are into exploring the outdoors like me, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button right now do it you're you're done you're good so let's get started let me show you the West Highland way In case you've never heard of the West Highland Way before, let's start with some facts. The trek runs 154 kilometers through the Scottish Highland, starting in Mil... Milgai. Mil... Mil starting in Milgai, all the way up north to Fort Willem. The common itineraries are between five and seven days. So like that, you have to hike around 30 kilometers a day. Compared to hiking in alpine areas, the elevation is rather moderate. So the whole trek runs between zero and 500 meters above sea level. What makes hiking and backpacking in Scotland so special is that you are allowed to wild camp in almost any areas except for some national parks. Therefore, you just have to follow some simple rules. Avoid overcrowded locations, don't light open fires, Leave the place as you found it, and if you're camping near a house, make sure that you ask the landowner before you pitch your tent. If you want the adventurous feeling of sleeping in a tent without sacrificing a hot shower in the toilet, there are also a lot of camping grounds alongside the trek, so everyone can decide which mixture is the perfect one. May is the most popular season to walk the West Highland Way, but basically it can be done during the whole year. Personally, I would recommend doing it during the warmer season, because like that you can pack a bit lighter. Because there are always a lot of other hikers on the trail and you're never too far from civilization, it is the perfect adventure to do by yourself like I did. My trip started on a Tuesday in July. I had to spend the night at the airport because my flight was leaving so early that I couldn't make it there in time. So I instantly felt like Tom Hanks in the movie Terminal. The next morning I boarded the plane which took me to Edinburgh or I think Edinburgh like Scottish people would say. And then I took the bus directly to Glasgow where I spent a few days to prepare my hike. It is possible to get food alongside the trail from time to time, but I didn't want to rely on that, so I just went shopping for supplies and made sure that I had approximately 3000 calories per hiking day. Besides some beautiful architecture and some furry friends, I also met some great people at the hostel where I was staying, and the night before I actually started the trekking might have ended up in a gay bar at 2am. But I guess sometimes you just have to party. In the next morning, I woke up a little later than expected, but still I made my way by train from Glasgow to Milgai, where the West Highland Way starts. Everything I needed fit in this backpack. So this is a uh, 60 plus 10 liters. It's a big guy, but um, very comfortable to wear. My most essential equipment was my tent. This here, you see it's very compact so I could put it underneath my backpack. Then I had some sleeping supplies, a little pillow, um, an air mattress, and a sleeping bag, obviously. Then I brought some kitchen supplies to cook food. Here we go. This little pot with a, a gas stove in there. Important thing, you can't bring those on the airplane, so I had to buy this in Scotland. And then you just put the pan on top, like this. Always very important when you're out in nature is the first aid kit. This guy here with all the essential things in there. Then I had a seat pillow. If you want to sit down to cook, you just don't have to sit down in the dirt. Then I needed some comfortable trekking shoes. Something like this with good grip, but not too heavy. What was really handy was my filter bottle because like that I didn't have to carry a lot of water with me. Whenever I was thirsty, I could just stop at a lake or a river and fill it up and have a drink. And the smallest piece of equipment I carried with me was a mosquito net. This guy here, because during the warm season in the highlands, there are those little mosquitoes. I think they call them midges and they are a pest. I just bought this net and you can just pull it over your head 
<laughs> because at first I didn't really believe that it was a problem. But as soon as I got out of my tent in the first morning, I was surrounded by this little, little box. And it's just not like big mosquitoes that attack you every once in a while. They swarm around you. So this year was handy. It is not necessary to bring a map and the compass because the paths are mostly very well marked. But sometimes I use my phone with the app maps.me to just make sure how far I had to walk every day and sometimes double check if I'm heading towards the right direction. On my first hiking day, the sun was shining and I was very excited when I saw the official starting sign of the West Highland Way. I enjoyed the first 24 kilometers, but when it got dark, I started to get a little nervous because I never wild camped all by myself. After a while, I saw another pitched tent by the side of the road and I was kind of relieved because I knew that there were other people around this area and soon after that, I found a perfect sleeping spot for the first night. When I ate breakfast the next morning, I had my first rendezvous with the midges. As soon as I got out of the tent, they were swarming around my head, so I just packed all my things and I ate something on the go. The first steep section was waiting ahead of me and I got rewarded with a beautiful view over Loch Lomond, which is a huge lake. In this part of the West Highland Way, you are not allowed to wild camp because it's a national park area. So I knew that if I didn't want to sleep on a camping ground, I had to make my way like 35 kilometers up north where it's allowed again. So it was a hard day and after 35 kilometers of hiking, I pitched my tent at the border of the lake. After a refreshing swim, I went to bed early so I could start the next day strong. The next day, I left the Loch Lomond area behind me and I wanted to reach a little village, Bridge of Orkey. I think this day was probably the hardest because after 35 kilometers, I still haven't reached my goal for the day. The sun was burning and I forgot to put sunscreen on my legs and I got a bad sunburn and I was just tired and there was no good camping spot in sight. I dragged myself all along to this village and I could set up my tent right beside the river. I had enough water to drink and again I could take a little swim to rest my tired legs. Day number three was probably the one with the most beautiful highland views. After taking some pictures of a beautiful morning scenery, I ended up in a big open place. My best friend at this moment was my mosquito spray that I brought with me because there were so many horseflies and they were out for my blood. They were so aggressive they kept attacking me but the spray really helped. After this I made my way to one of the oldest inns in Scotland, the King's House Hotel. And from there on the scenery couldn't get any more highlandy. It's just perfect. They also shot some scenes of James Bond's Skyfall around this area, so it's not surprising that I felt like I was walking through a literal movie set. Also, the steepest part of the West Highland Way was right in front of me, the Devil's Staircase. I was a bit disappointed because a lot of tourists, they just took their car to get there and walked it up. And after three days of hiking with my backpack, I felt like they were cheating a little bit. But I can understand it, I mean, who wants to miss out on those landscapes? I was very exhausted that evening and I couldn't find a good spot to pitch my tent. So I stopped at the camping ground in the little village Kinloch Leven. I think that's how you pronounce it. I enjoyed the hot shower and then I went to the store to buy some more food with a guy that I met on the camping ground. He wanted to go to a restaurant to eat something and I joined him. And at first I didn't order anything, but when I saw the apple crumble with custard on the menu, my stomach was screaming at me after three days of just rice and some oat crackers. But what I didn't know is that on the next morning when I woke up, I felt like I had a stone in my belly. I was really sick, so without any breakfast, I started the hike and I didn't really feel good. But once again, the magnificent Highland views motivated me, so I went on step by step until I could see Fort Willem in the distance. Compared to the landscapes that I've seen the days before, the last bit was quite unspectacular. In Fort Willem, there's just this sign that says the official ending of the West Highland Way. I just asked another hiker if she could take my picture with this sign and then basically that's it. You're you're in the city and um, you're done. I went to the main station where I took a bus, which brought me up north to Inverness, where I ended up in a very cozy hostel. I had a great time in Inverness and I recovered from the 154 kilometers of the last days. For the first time in my life, I saw wild dolphins in a canal near the city. I had some good food and I tasted some good Scottish whiskey with some friends that I met at the hostel. One night, we ended up in this pub called Johnny Fox's and we stayed there until they closed down the bar.
I still had some time left on my trip, so I decided to go to Shetland, which is the most northern island of Scotland and the home to the famous Shetland ponies. From Aberdeen, I took an overnight ferry to get to the island and I rented a little car to get around. It was a good idea to take this short trip to the island because the vibes there are just absolutely amazing. The mixture of those beautiful cliffs, the lonely beaches and those foggy mornings is just unforgettable. I was also very impressed by the rich wildlife. I saw countless birds, like those little puffin guys, and at one point I even saw some seals which were chilling on a rock on the coast. To finish my West Highland Way adventure, I went back from Shetland to Edinburgh, where I spent the last few days of my trip. My favorite thing to do was a little day hike up to a viewpoint which is called Arthur's Seat. It's only a few steps away from the city, but it's like a massive cliff, and from there you have the best view over the city. And I think I found the best ice cream in Edinburgh in a place called Mary's Milk Bar. The trip to Scotland to walk the West Highland Way was definitely a great experience. It wasn't always comfortable and camping alone in the woods was quite a challenge for me, but I think those are the moments that you will never forget and those are the stories that you tell to your friends once you're back from your trip. Well, by now I really hope you know what you can expect from this amazing hike in Europe and how you can combine it with some other great destinations in Scotland. If you have any questions about something that I just told you, then just use the comments section or you can also contact me on my Instagram profile at Outdoors with Sandro. And before you go now and book your ticket to Scotland, please make sure that you leave a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then you won't miss the next video and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.